And welcome back. Breakthrough New York transforms the lives of talented kids from low-income backgrounds by providing educational support from middle school through college and into careers. Their goal? To create leaders who break the cycle of poverty in their families and affect positive change in their communities. We're going to take a look at some students and their testimonies for the program. My family is from Jamaica and my mom came here so that we could live a better life. When I first came to BTNY, I was nervous about the work because I didn't want to fail anything. And my first day, we had to take two tests. But I actually made a friend. I don't know if he's gonna be watching this, but his name is Kevin. So yeah, shout out to Kevin. Coming from an immigrant family, we didn't really know much about high schools. We just knew like high schools after middle school. I didn't know any of the other schools Breakthrough introduced me to, so I was very hesitant to go to Calhoun. It's very intimidating to go into a predominantly white institute where you're nervous about your identity. I often thought, I'll never fit in there, but a mentor from Breakthrough sat down and she said, take the path not taken. And with our prayer leadership program, just having an older student who's been through it say, it's fine, be proud of who you are, it really makes a difference. And there you see some of the testimonies of Breakthrough New York. Well, joining us now to tell us more, Beth Onfried, who is the executive director. And we thank you so much for being with us. Thank you so much for having me, Darren. Enjoy the testimonies. They're wonderful students. Yeah. yeah. And so for people who don't exactly know a little bit about Breakthrough New York. Sure. Um, so Breakthrough New York is a 10-year free college access and success program. Students apply during the sixth grade, mm -hmm. and we work with them for the next 10 years, um, providing academic support and enrichment. Um, and we help them navigate the confusing and challenging application processes for both high school and college and support them way, all the way through um, college graduation. Mm -hmm. So when you're a student, you mm -hmm. face a lot of challenges, mm -hmm. and, and your job is to really try to help them to navigate the challenges, right? Mm -hmm. What are some of the challenges that they're facing that maybe we don't particularly know? Yeah, um, I think some of it just comes from um, what's challenging about being a student or being an adolescent. Mm -hmm. um, some of it comes from the challenges of a complicated school system. You know, every student has to apply to high school regardless of where you currently go to school. Um, just to go to your local school, provide, you know, you have to go through an application process. And our students are really motivated. They're really excited about um, being challenged academically, and they want to go to a school that will really prepare them to go to college. Mm -hmm. um, so they apply to three different types of schools, um, private schools, parochial schools, and public schools. And even within that, there are different options, specialized um, high schools, selective high schools, independent day and boarding schools and they have so many different parts to those tests. So knowing what it is that they need to do, how they need to do it, um, let alone other challenges that can come from how do they um, get to the places they need to go. Um, you know, our students are, are again, really dedicated. Um, they come to our programs after school, but they have to commute a long way to get there. They're just, um, there are lots of, lots of challenges along the way that we try to help them with. And so as you recognize these challenges, your job is of certainly to navigate them mm -hmm. through. So how does your organization really do that in terms of navigating through those? Yeah, um, I think a key part of that is um, providing information and doing it through partnership. So we work really closely with our students and families um, from the beginning of their time in the program. So as they enter the summer after sixth grade, they're in our, our program all day long for five weeks during the summer. Um, so students are really dedicated to academic enrichment and we're providing opportunities for them to build skills so that when they apply to these high schools that they are successful applicants and that they can thrive in these really rigorous environments. Um, and we want to make sure that parents are on board with that too. Um, it's, a, it's a lot to kind of figure out what's right for, for their child. Um, and so we start off by explaining what our program is like. Um, we make sure we go through all the different options for families and how to decide among those options when um, they're starting to really consider the high school admissions process. And we do that at the end of um, seventh grade. So in kind of winter, spring of seventh grade, well before they need to actually submit those applications in eighth grade. Mm -hmm. So you've got low-income students that you're helping mm -hmm. and assisting, right? Then you mm -hmm. have the whole question about private schools. Yeah. Because, and we know the private schools are costly. Yep. And they cost a pretty penny, and education is going up pretty high. But you encourage, actually, yeah. kids to go ahead and apply to private schools. Yep. Why? 
Great question. Um, interestingly, um, sometimes what seems to be the most expensive option can actually be really affordable because of the great financial resources that those schools have and are able to provide our families. So um, it's complicated to fill out financial aid forms sometimes, and we're here to help with that. But when you apply for aid, some of our students are eligible for full scholarships at these institutions. So um, we don't want them to limit their options because of an initial price tag. And the same is true for college. Um, sometimes private colleges can appear to be expensive, and they also are sometimes the most well-resourced and can provide really generous financial aid packages. So we want to make sure our students are checking out all options, public and private. Yeah, and so you got this process, and every and I know, because you know, being a dad and having to go through this process with mm -hmm. my son with high school and then into college, it yep. is like, I felt like I was going to college all over again, right? Yep. And so you're trying, to, you're trying to navigate, but there are, you know, common mistakes that we make, right? Mm -hmm. So what are some of the mistakes that we're making mm -hmm. when, it, when you're involved and engaged in this application process? Because mm -hmm. um, if we can help somebody through that, I think that would be great. Yeah, um, I think, I think part of it is just the stress of it. We can get so bogged down in the anxiety about how it's gonna work out that we can kind of paralyze ourselves or feel overwhelmed that there are just so many options out there. Or on the other hand, not considering enough options because I have my heart set on this one particular school. Mm -hmm. um, I find with a lot of our families, they know about one school in particular. Here in the Bronx, it's often Bronx Science, right. um, and which is a wonderful school. It's also a really big school. Not all ch uh, children will thrive in that environment. And so we really try to encourage our families to kind of take a step back. Um, look at a range of options and really cast a wide net that's particular to what their child likes, what they're interested in, what they want to accomplish. Um, they don't need to apply everywhere and we'll help them kind of sort through what the best options would be for them, but to really keep an open mind mm -hmm. um, because I think that you know, there's only so much information you can have before you get accepted to schools and go visit them. I mean, some schools are now ho hosting open houses and we're trying to make sure our families are informed about that. But some of our families, if you're working, if you're living further away, you can't stand online for hours for an open house. It's just not accessible. And so trying to navigate um, what's realistic and kind of set realistic expectations for yourself while also kind of aiming high and, and trying to do your best. And Beth, in the beginning we saw like testimonies, right? Mm -hmm. but, but what are some of the success stories that stick out in mind for you? Yeah, I mean, I think um, I, two of those students certainly are success stories. Uh, London, I think, is in eighth grade now, so he's applying for schools. Um, Khadija's um, her, in her senior year of um, high school, so she's applying to college now. And she is thriving in her high school. Um, and she's, um, I think she was surprised to find that this private school option for her, um, it really met her needs and was something that was different from what she was thinking of when she entered our program. Mm -hmm. So, um, but there, there are many others. I mean, we have students who through our 10 year pipeline have already graduated from college, are off in the world um, pursuing graduate degrees or in a field that's really exciting to them. Um, one of our alumni is a, um, he works in real estate here in the city, mm -hmm. in his home neighborhood, he's in Brooklyn. Um, mm -hmm. But he um, is excited to give back and is part of our Young Professionals Board, so he's kind of mentoring our students and, um, and contributing to us in different ways. So I think um, it feels daunting, um, but our students, I mean, 98% of our students are going to college prep high schools, 98% are on track to graduate from college. It's pretty impressive given the fact that 16% of low-income students are um, you nationally graduate from college. So So who qualifies for Breakthrough New York? Yeah, um, so we do work with students from low-income families, um, and we work with students who are academically motivated and have high academic potential, but, um, you know, still a range of, of performance thus far. So students who are getting 80s or above in their classes, um, students who are getting threes and fours on their state exams. Um, they do apply during the sixth grade year, so if you have a current sixth grader, mm -hmm. um, they, they can um, go to our website, btny.org, to find out more about the application process. Um, we also reach out to middle schools around the city, and a, about a third of our students are from the Bronx, so strong representation here. Um, and one of the nice things that we have in our program is that we have um, local sites. So then when students come to our after school program, we have a site here in the Bronx, so it's a little closer to home and school. Mm -hmm. um, but really, we're looking for students who are just excited to eventually go off to college. 10 years is a long time to yeah. commit. Um, and we will you know, make sure that students and families understand what that looks like um, because they're doing summer and after school classes with us during middle school. 
Um, but it's really, it's a wonderful community. They find really, um, they find peers who are really excited to do the same things and support one another along the way. And I think that's an important part of our, our program. Oh, we got a few seconds left. I want to ask the question, resources, right? So yeah. if, you're, if you're a low income family trying to find those resources, yeah. Maybe I don't get to break through New York, yep. right? But I still want to know what those resources are. How do wh where do I go? What do I look? I, I think the the New York City website, the NYC's um, schools.gov, is is a great resource for them. Going to your your local guidance counselor. Um, mm -hmm. Guidance counselors are there, and they have expertise in navigating this process. They have a lot of students, so you may need to be persistent. Um, mm -hmm. But they really are a great resource, especially with all the changes going on in the high school admissions process. Yeah, and just be patient with the process, right? Yeah. Yeah, and, and look out for one another. Yeah, yeah, well, you're doing great work. Thank, Thank you, you so much for the work that you're doing, the students that you're helping and navigating. It really is making a difference. Thank you so much. All righty, Beth, thanks a lot. Well, listen, now, if you want more information on Breakthrough New York, you know what you can do? Well, visit their website, btny.org, or on social media at Breakthrough New York. And, unfortunately, we've come to the end of our show today. I want to thank all our guests for joining us. Most of all, I want to thank you, the viewer, for tuning in. Now, if you missed any part of today's show, you can catch ReCableCast at 5 and 10 p.m. on Optimum Channel 67. If you have Verizon Files, that would be Channel 33, or watch us anytime on the web at bronxnet.org. That wraps it up for us here on the set of Open. I'm Darren Jaime saying make sure to keep this channel wide open. Special shout-out to all of our viewers on Manhattan Neighborhood Network, to the family, and all you guys. Good to see you. Take care. God bless. And we'll talk to you real soon. Rena Valentine will be back on Friday with a brand new, fresh episode of Open. See you.